Baxter B6. Hi there, this is Baxter. Uh, welcome to the first of my videos. M my brother Baz told me that you guys are real good at uh, following directions, but he's not s quite so sure whether you can uh, work on your own on this stuff. So he's asked me to come in and um, make a couple tutorials. Well, not tutorials, but just some uh, you know, like little quizzes and stuff. First place I'm going to go um, to get something which you can't see me because I'm over on the help window. But assuming you have Max MSP open, you can go to the very far right of your menu bar on the top there, and there's the help, which is uh, hopefully maybe you've even been there before. I'm going to go to the jitter tutorials, which brings up this uh, dialogue, this uh, this um, document here, and I'm going to go to jitter tutorial one, uh, where it says playing a quick time movie. Uh, any day now. Okay, and I'm going to open the tutorial. There we go. So what we have here is this uh, little um, instruction manual styly and the QuickTime movie uh, window. Um, the uh, yes, JIT dot window. Now the first thing I'm going to ask you um, is when we click this button here that says restart um, we assume that well it saves play it's banging away here it looks like everything's running why am I not seeing the QuickTime movie playback in this window I've hit start okay um, we'll give you a couple seconds to think about that one um, this is a really simple question, I hope, so here's a couple of minutes, seconds to think about it. Alright. Uh, you probably already realized, I hope, that if you click this message that says read countdown.movie um, you'll start, you'll see the the movie in there uh, in being played back by jit.qt.movie there's no movie currently loaded in there until we click that message and then lo and behold there it is the movie's playing back okay so my next um, question is here's a thing here that says time zero and every time I click this message, we go back to the start of the movie. Alright, very good. What would I do if I wanted to have, instead of time zero, have some time where I, that I could control using a number box? So, make me an integer box by, click, by hitting I on my keyboard with the patcher unlocked. There it is unlocked, and there's my integer box, and if I stick it into, if I connect the outlet of the time, the integer into the time uh, message, obviously if I lock it again, for those of you who haven't got this far, I hold my command key down on my Macintosh, or control on my PC to lock and unlock when I click in the empty space. Anyway, so I click on, so now when I do something in this time with this integer it doesn't matter what number I put in there what it is doing is triggering the outlet output of this message uh, let's say I want to have this be the time that it starts at what would I do the answer my friends um, can be found in if we go to the max tutorial again I'm going under the help menu on the right side of the menu bar in max and if you go to this, uh, which tutorial is that? Tutorial number three, numbers and lists. If you look at this tutorial, uh, somewhere in here, I'm giving you a very good clue, is a um, clue as to how you would do what I was just talking about here, where you would be able to change this time by using the, where's my movie gone? There it is. Uh, would be able to change the time in here. I'll give you a couple, uh, you can pause the video while you solve this problem, um, but while you're waiting, uh, I'll give you time to pause the video, I'll give you a little music.
Okay, so you're back. Welcome back. Um, if you, hopefully you've solved this problem that I asked you to um, deal with. And yes, uh, you would put the dollar one argument after the t message time, and that dollar one is the replaceable argument in here, which means whatever comes into it, whatever um, comes into the inlet here, whatever integer or float uh, will come in, it will replace that with um, that number. We'll replace the dollar one with that number. You notice now I can start it at two or one or four or six. All right. Uh, next thing, let's just uh, assume that let's make a new message which is M on the computer keyboard and this message is going to be rate. We're going to control the rate of this video again with this dollar one argument coming in here. Let's do exactly the same thing where I have an integer coming into my rate uh, message and then my rate message connected to my QT movie. Um, and with this all connected now we can see that I can, I can make my video go ultra slow or fast backwards or forwards or stop, uh, normal speed and then twice the speed, three times, etc. How would I, what would I do to make the rate less um, less extreme so that I could change it by values less than these jumps of um, integer values. Okay, that's a kind of a simple question. And again, it can be answered by looking at the Max Tutorial 3. Um, so yeah, I'll give you, I'll give you approximately um, this long to think about it. Okay, so if you um, probably shouldn't have needed too long to think about this one, but yes, as it has, as it shows in tutorial three here, there's a there's a, such a thing as an integer, and there's such a thing as a floats, um, and floating point numbers are obviously those that are smaller in degree than integers. Um, well, they at least allow that to make a float in um, um, box. We just click F on our keyboard with the patcher unlocked and up pops a float and I can put that into the same rate message and now I can control my video much more um, finely, fine tune the speed of the playback. Very good. I guess you might have, uh, if you're the sort of person who likes to find really complicated answers, you might have figured out a way of scaling this integer value instead of using the float. For example, you may have, you know, done something like, let's just put this over here somewhere. You might have uh, made a new object, like multiply by something like 0.1, so now you would have smaller values coming out of here. Okay, that would have been one solution. Or you might have even gone to the extremes of using something like scale, which is kind of the, the multi-purpose input-output um, scaling device. But either way, I'm glad you've um, managed to sit through the first of my Baxter basics, and I'm going to catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.